The upper large SUV segment is one of the toughest categories for drive car of the year in 2022. These vehicles need to be all-rounders and they need to be good at every discipline. On test, we've got the Nissan Patrol, the Land Cruiser 300 series and of course the Land Rover Defender. The judges will be looking at a bunch of key components with these vehicles, not the least of which is on-road refinement and capability. They need to be comfortable as well, but they also need to be capable of tackling the toughest tracks off-road as well. Add in the fact that a lot of owners use these for touring and towing, and this really is one of the toughest segments for Drive Car of the Year 2022. Well, it's been raining all week, and it's finally stopped raining. Still a bit of cloud in the sky, but at least it is not raining on us, so that we can announce the winner, a worthy winner, for Drive Car of the Year 2022, best upper large four-wheel drive, is this vehicle, the Land Rover Defender. It's fantastic on-road, it's fantastic off-road. Let's take a closer look at how it managed to edge out the iconic Land Cruiser and last year's winner, the Nissan Patrol, to get the crown. The judges worked hard to separate the three finalists in this category, especially given each have their own strong points. Scoring remained close across every category, and while last year's winner, the Nissan Patrol, remains the capable, high-quality value-packed option, the all-new Land Cruiser 300 series resets the bar for the expectations of the legendary Land Cruiser nameplate. It is the Defender, however, that scores the highest across all disciplines, thanks to its exceptional combination of on- and off-road ability. While the final result was tight, there's no doubt the Defender is the best all-rounder in a high-quality trio of finalists. Land Rover Defender, it really does do everything well. It's luxurious and plush on the road, absolutely amazing off the road. It's the absolute complete package. This was one of the most hotly contested segments in this year's Drive Car of the Year. The reigning champion, the Land Rover Defender, was up against the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series, the first new Land Cruiser in 14 years. The judging team had a lot of late nights discussing the merits of these top two contenders. In the end, the Defender was deemed as having the broadest range of ability. It was the best on-road by far and also exceptional off-road. But the Land Rover Defender isn't perfect. Despite being bigger than the Land Cruiser 300 series, it's actually less space efficient inside and has a smaller cargo hold. Land Rover Defender customers might never set foot in a Toyota showroom and Toyota Land Cruiser customers might not consider the Defender. So in many regards, the two vehicles appeal to two different audiences. But when push came to shove and we had to choose one winner, the judges voted in favour of the Land Rover Defender. One of the best things about the Land Rover Defender are the amount of powertrains on offer. Here we have the diesel. There's also the P400 model, which is an inline six with an electric supercharger that's just buttery smooth. And if that's not enough, there's a V8 model coming this year too, which we're super keen to have a go in. The thing the Land Rover Defender does, I think better than any other four wheel drive, certainly serious four wheel drive, is the transition from on-road refinement to off-road capability. This cabin really does cross both of those disciplines, I guess you could say, with consummate ease. On-road, it's almost like a luxury car. Off-road, it's comfortable, it's functional, and it's really user-friendly. Now, in testing recently, we've been jumping between the Model Year 21 Defender and Model Year 22 Defender. This one that we're sitting in now has the massive new infotainment screen. It's got this lovely curve in it, and despite the fact that it's bigger than my iPad, it doesn't look like an afterthought. It looks like it's been really well integrated into the dashboard. We love the way all of these controls here in the central part of the dashboard are really easy to understand and access. So you've got your low range controls, the height adjustable suspension, obviously your heating and air conditioning, but you've also got terrain response. So when we're doing our off-road work, we can just really quickly put it into low range, really quickly move it across into whichever terrain response mode we want it in, and it's easy, really, really easy. Likewise, the driver display, it's easy as well, um, and it's easy to understand. You know, it's easy to control, but it's easy to understand. Not too many switches on the steering wheel. I think that deserves another tick because it's real easy for manufacturers to just throw controls everywhere. Now, on the sense of premium and luxury, 
The starting price of this particular Defender at $101,000 is around about 300 Series GXL money. With the options this has got, up around $120,000, that's about Land Cruiser 300 Sahara money. This feels like a luxury vehicle that belongs in a different segment, to be completely honest with you, than the Land Cruiser. As good as the Land Cruiser is, this feels, compared to that, especially when you're on-road rolling along, you know, a B road on course chip bitumen, like you're sitting in a limousine. There's plenty of storage. There's plenty of clever storage as well. It's quiet, beautiful visibility. Another Land Rover strong point has always been that visibility and the seating height. And you just can't find another upper large four-wheel drive that is this capable off-road, this comfortable on-road, and is executed in the way the Land Rover Defender is. Our test Defender is the 110 SE D300 with a three litre twin turbo inline six cylinder engine and eight speed automatic transmission with all wheel drive. It makes 220 kilowatts and 650 newton metres and scoots from zero to 100 kilometres an hour in seven seconds. Fuel use is acclaimed 7.9 litres per 100 kilometres and on the freeway we used mid nines on test. Around town, expect to use between 10 and 12 litres per 100 kilometres. Just for a change, a little bit more rain uh, and we are all drowned rats because of course we had a flat tyre and then it started raining and then we had to air up the tyres on all the other vehicles as we left our four wheel drive testing loop. Uh, and the more time I spend with this Land Rover Defender, the more impressed I am. I keep saying it, and we do sound a little bit boring when we keep repeating this, but it's the transition that this vehicle manages to achieve between on-road refinement and off-road capability that is the most impressive thing that the Land Rover Defender does. It's incredibly capable, but it does all of that with a sense of luxury. I think the driveline is fantastic and that's true whether you're on road or off. The link between the engine and the gearbox is almost seamless. The gearbox does what it does without you even noticing that it's there, let alone feeling any shifts. Low range is fantastic and of course, terrain response is a really, really good option for those of you that aren't as experienced off road and want the car to do more of the work for you. So that works really well too. But the driveline in general is fantastic. And this road that I'm on now, is quite a bumpy dirt road. There's no shuttering from the driveline if I'm on and off the throttle. You can barely feel the ruts and bumps through the suspension. Gearbox isn't fussed. It just gets about its work and it does it so easily. And I just think all in all, this package is fantastic. You know, if you've got one vehicle that has to do a whole range of different things, if you can only afford one family vehicle or one large family vehicle, you might have a second one that's smaller, for running around town or running the kids to school or whatever, but if you can only afford one bigger vehicle, this will feel like a limousine on road. It feels like a really expensive vehicle, even though comparatively it's not. It's got a really premium cabin. It's beautiful to drive on road, incredibly capable off road. It'll tow and it does everything with a sense of safety and ease so that you never feel like you're out of your depth behind the wheel, no matter how experienced you are as an off roader. I just think the Land Rover Defender really is a fantastic all-round package. The judges believe that the Defender is ultimately the most capable all-rounder in this category. It features a near seamless blend of on-road refinement with luxury-defying off-road ability. An SUV that is this refined and comfortable on any sealed surface has no right to be as effortless as the Defender is on the toughest off-road tracks. Capable of taking you and your family anywhere and doing it in style, the Defender is the culmination of everything Land Rover understands about driving adventure. While refinement and all-round ability highlighted the judge's commentary, the value the Defender represents, starting from just under the $100,000 mark before on-road costs, sits it squarely in the gun sights of the ever-popular Land Cruiser. Cabin ergonomics and comfort across all five seats also came in for mention, and the control systems that Land Rover has implemented are also excellent.